So, we will uh, look at application of first law to psychrometric processes where we will look at both flow as well as um, uh, non-flow processes. Although flow processes are probably more common in HVAC because uh, if you want to heat or cool a building, normally you have the uh, refrigeration power plant uh, perhaps on the roof of the building and then uh, the plant is connected to the rooms through ducts and so on. Okay. So, flow uh, examples are more common although non-flow examples are also non-flow situations or applications are also there. So, we will look at uh, both of them. Okay. Now, application of uh, first law to psychrometric process is quite straightforward. Uh, the simplicity is that you know we are simply treating moist air as a mixture of uh, two components, uh, two ideal gases, dry air and water vapor. Okay. Uh, so, that is where the simplicity comes from. So, um, you know really uh, application of first law to psychrometric process is just like uh, application of first law using ideal gas, mixture of ideal gases and that we have uh, done before. Okay. So, it is uh, no different from that. Uh, what uh, the two points that we need to note is that the change in internal energy of dry air is calculated assuming that air is a dry air is a calorically perfect gas. So, we assume C V to be constant and the specific internal energy of water vapor this is for non-flow process. Specific internal energy of water vapor is usually approximated like this that it is uh, just equal to the uh, specific internal energy of saturated vapor at the same temperature. Although we can probably look up the value from the table uh, for engineering purposes, this is simply not what the trouble and we simply approximate as U g of t. So, U v of t comma p is simply taken as uh, U g of t. Okay. Even though we may know the partial pressure of the water vapor and the temperature, we simply just take it as uh, specific internal energy as U g of t. Okay. So, um, we looked at uh, an example uh, before which was uh, something like this where uh, moist air at uh, 25 degree Celsius in um, one atmosphere was uh, <coughs> compressed in a polytropic process up to state 2 to 5 times its uh, uh, initial pressure and then it was cooled at constant volume. So, what we are asked to determine now is the amount of heat uh, removed during the cooling process. Okay. So, if we simply, up, uh, simply apply first law to the cooling process, we get delta E equal to delta U equal to Q minus W. There is no change in, there are no kinetic or potential energy changes. So, delta E equal to delta U and W is 0 because it is a constant volume process, no displacement work and there are no other forms of work also. So, uh, W is 0. So, Q is equal to delta U and delta U itself uh, uh, consists of delta U of dry air plus delta U of uh, uh, the water vapor. So, we may write this as delta U of dry air plus delta U of water vapor. And the delta U of dry air may be written as M A times C V A times T 3 minus T 2. Okay. And the delta U for water vapor may be written as mass of the water vapor times U 3 minus U 2. Notice that um, uh, what we are doing here, so basically delta U of water vapor would be mass of water times change in its internal energy, but mass of water uh, remains the same and that is equal to m v 1. So, we write it as m v 1 times u 3 minus u 2. And by using the definition of omega 1, remember omega 1 is equal to uh, m v 1 divided by m a. So, we may write uh, this as m a times omega 1 and then we can pull out uh, m a and write m a itself as m over 1 plus omega 1. So, then the expression becomes something like this and U 2 is simply equal to U g at 138 degree Celsius. The temperature was 138 degree Celsius after the compression process. So, we can get this from the temperature table and the dryness fraction was evaluated uh, to be Okay, so the uh, dryness fraction was evaluated to be 0.3955. So, the specific internal energy of the mixture at uh, state 3 may be evaluated as U f plus x times U g minus U f. So, that is 1016.04. Notice that 
the specific internal energy of the if it is just vapor then the specific internal energy of the vapor alone is approximated as Ug at that temperature. If it is a saturated mixture then we need to evaluate it in the same manner as we have always done. Okay? So, we take Cv of uh, dry air to be 717.86 joule per kg Kelvin throughout and if you substitute the known values we get Q to be minus 101 kilojoules. Okay, so, uh, that is the uh, uh, that is application of first law to psychrometric uh, problem which as you can see is no different from what we have done before. Um, uh, only uh, uh, important things that you need to keep in mind are uh, these uh, sorts of things mass of uh, uh, vapor. So, for example, if you look at this expression delta u for water vapor itself would have been equal to m of uh, water let us say H2O times uh, delta specific of the water, okay, which itself may be written as say so initial uh, in the final state we have mixture of liquid plus uh, water, I am sorry liquid plus vapor. So, we say M H2O times uh, U3 minus M. Now, instead of writing M H2O, we can simply write this as mass of vapor because initially we have only vapor. So, we write M V2 times uh, U2 and this is only vapor. So, we approximate this as Ug of T2. Okay. So, uh, you need to keep track of uh, these sorts of things. Vapor, if the water condenses then you have to take into account the mass of the condensate. The mass of the condensate may be small, but specific internal energy is of the order of few uh, thousand kilojoules per kilogram. So, that actually can be a uh, significant quantity mass times the specific internal energy. If it is just mass then in certain applications we may simply uh, neglect the mass of the water vapor that has condensed without any impact on the accuracy. But for specific internal energy that uh, that will not be the or for internal energy that will not be the case. Okay? So, you just need to keep track of these masses <coughs> uh, of uh, vapor and liquid of the water quite accurately in psychrometric applications. Okay, let us look at the next example. 2 kg of air at 25 degrees Celsius, 1 atmosphere and 25 percent relative humidity is compressed isothermally until the volume becomes one fifth of the initial volume. Determine the amount of water that condenses if any and the heat that is removed. So, basically you may think of a piston cylinder mechanism like this. This contains moist air and it is compressed until the volume becomes one fifth of the initial volume. Okay, we are asked to determine any uh, water or the amount of water that may condense and the heat that is removed. So, the relative humidity is uh, given uh, as uh, 25 percent at uh, state 1 and the temperature is also known. So, at uh, state 1 as you can see from here 25 degrees Celsius 1 atmosphere and 25 percent relative humidity. So, we may look up P sat of 25 from uh, the temperature table and we get the partial pressure of uh, the water vapor to be 0 0.79225 kilo Pascal. So, that uh, state is indicated here. Now, it is being compressed isothermally. So, that means we are following uh, this line here. Now, if you cross the saturated vapor line during the process, then obviously the water will condense. Okay? So, we need to find out the uh, pressure, uh, temperature is already known. So, we need to find out the pressure at which uh, the process line crosses the saturated vapor line. Okay. okay. Since the compression process is isothermal, the final pressure is 5 times 101.325 kilo Pascal. So, basically what we are saying is the final pressure of the contents of the cylinder is 5 times the initial pressure which is 101.325. So, 5 times 101.325 is the final pressure of the contents of the cylinder because it is an isothermal process. Okay. Now, the partial pressure of um, uh, the water vapor is basically notice that the partial pressure of water vapor can only go up to. So, here is the uh, uh, here is the iso bar. So, the partial pressure of water vapor can go only up to P sat of 25. 
which is equal to as we just looked it up p sat of 25 is 3.169. So, once the uh, partial pressure of water vapor exceeds that water begins to condense ok. Since we have said that you know the uh, pressure, uh, pressure is 5 times that much and the volume uh, is also going to be one fifth of that. So, we have to be careful, but the important point is the partial pressure of the water vapor can increase only up to 3.169, which is just about uh, 4 times its initial pressure. Okay. So, uh, at, the, at the instant when the um, uh, process line crosses the saturated vapor line, uh, the partial pressure of water vapor becomes 3.169, which is 4 times the initial value, initial partial pressure of the water vapor. So, once it reaches that, the partial pressure of the water vapor remains constant because phase change begins to take place. Water vapor begins to condense. So, the partial pressure of the water vapor remains at 3.169 kilo Pascal while the mixture pressure continues to increase as the uh, contents of the cylinder are compressed. Okay. So, that is a very, very subtle point. So, the water pressure, partial pressure of water vapor can go uh, only up to 3.17 and then it remains constant. Okay? So, the pressure increases from here to here and then remains constant, whereas the mixture pressure continues to increase until it is 5 times the initial pressure. So, the specific volume of water vapor at the initial state it is slightly superheated. So, we will assume that it is an ideal gas and uh, use the ideal gas equation of state and calculate it to be 173.74. The final specific volume is one fifth of the initial specific volume V1 divided by 5 and the initial specific volume itself is equal to Vv1 because it is in uh, the vapor form. So, the final specific volume comes out to be 34.748 meter cube per kilogram. And we may evaluate the dryness fraction once, uh, uh, once this is known, we may evaluate the dryness fraction as 0 0.8014. Using the definition of uh, dryness fraction, we may evaluate the mass of water that has condensed to be 1.94 grams, just like what we did, uh, just like what we did before. Okay. Note that uh, m dot using the definition of uh, the dryness fraction, we may write the uh, mass of liquid water as uh, m dot m w equal to one minus x times m v one. Okay. Remember, uh, dryness fraction is defined as mass of uh, vapor divided by mass of the mixture, and mass of vapor itself may be written as mass of the mixture minus mass of uh, liquid divided by mass of mixture. So, if you rewrite this, you get mass of uh, liquid to be m times 1 minus x, where m is the uh, mass of the saturated mixture. Now, remember we had water a certain amount of water vapor initially and out of that water vapor, some amount has condensed and some remains as uh, water vapor. So, the mass of the mixture is equal to the mass of vapor that we started out with. So, m in this case is equal to m v 1. So, that is how we end up with this expression. Application of first law to uh, the isothermal compression process gives delta E equal to delta U, no K E or P E changes, Q minus W and W is uh, displacement work. So, that is uh, P 1 V 1 natural log V 2 over V 1, where uh, P is the mixture pressure and V is the volume occupied by the mixture. And delta U itself is comprised of two things, delta U for dry air plus delta U for water. Delta U for dry air is 0 because it is an isothermal process and we have assumed dry air to be uh, calorically perfect gas. Again delta U for water uh, is nothing but, so delta U for water is mass of water times u2 minus u1 okay and mass of water uh, is uh, mv1 because that's the total amount of vapor that was present and part of which is condensed now so this may be written as mv1 times u2 minus u1 so this was initially 
superheated. So, we approximate this as U g of T 1 and U 2 itself may be evaluated like this 1951.3 using the temperature table. And the initial volume, remember we are using the Dalton's model. So, the initial volume uh, is, um, is written like this. Okay. The, the initial volume is written like this because we are using Dalton's model and the components occupy the entire uh, volume that is available. They are at different pressures, same temperature and same volume. So, we may evaluate the initial volume as m volume occupied by vapor divided by the specific volume of the vapor. So, if you take the uh, mass of the vapor outside, we may write it in terms of omega and mass of the mixture and after substituting the values, we get Q to be minus 4.4736 kilojoules. So, this again uh, illustrates how uh, application of first law to a psychrometric process is carried out. Okay. And once again, you must uh, uh, keep track of the, uh, uh, the mass of different phases uh, in these problems, especially when condensation takes place. Okay. If condensation does not take place, then it is relatively straightforward. The mass of the individual components remains the same and we can just go ahead. Okay. If phase change uh, takes place, phase change for the water takes place, then we need to keep track of the amount of water that uh, condenses and the amount that is remaining in the vapor phase. So, the uh, next um, uh, set of examples that we are going to discuss are steady flow examples. We have seen um, a non-flow uh, examples so far. Next, we will look at steady flow example. And as I mentioned earlier, HVAC involves unit operations like heating, cooling or humidification, dehumidification. So, we will try to look at uh, look at examples involving these operations. Since these are steady flow applications, we will encounter the enthalpy or specific enthalpy of individual components and not specific internal energy. And uh, the enthalpy uh, of the mixture is calculated like this. It is uh, the sum of the enthalpy of dry air plus uh, water vapor. And um, as just like what we did uh, earlier for specific internal energy, the specific enthalpy of uh, the vapor is approximated as Hg of T. Okay. Earlier, we said U of the vapor specific internal energy was Ug of T. This one is Hg of T. And the specific uh, enthalpy of the air itself um, is written as Cp times T, where we take Cp to be 1.005. So, we are assuming as I said before, the dry air to be calorically perfect. So, the specific enthalpy of dry air is written as Cp times T. So, the first example reads like this, ambient air at 5 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere pressure and 85 percent relative humidity is to be heated as it flows steadily in a duct. So, that the relative humidity becomes 25 percent. The volume flow rate is 100 meter cube per minute at the inlet, determine the rate of heat addition and assume pressure remains constant. That is, mixture pressure remains constant at one atmosphere. So, the inlet state is completely fixed. We know uh, the temperature, relative humidity, volume flow rate and the pressure. At exit, relative humidity is given. We are asked to determine how much uh, heat is being added. So, relative humidity is given at the inlet, temperature is also known. So, we may evaluate P sat of 5 degrees Celsius from the temperature table and evaluate the partial pressure of water vapor at the inlet to be 0 0.74205 kilopascal. And the um, uh, humidity ratio may also be evaluated as 4.59 grams of vapor per kilogram of dry air. At the outlet, the mixture pressure remains the same and since no water is added or removed, the partial pressure of water vapor also remains the same. Okay. So, P V 2 equal to P V 1 equal to this and omega 2 is equal to omega 1. So, because no water is added or removed and the uh, relative humidity value is also given. So, using the definition of relative humidity, we may evaluate P sat of T 2 to be 2.9682 kilo Pascal. And from the temperature table, we can then work out that the exit temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now, we apply steady flow energy equation to the duct 
and this gives us q dot minus w x dot uh, plus m dot times h 1 minus h 2 equal to 0 and there is no uh, work in this uh, case. So, w x dot is 0 and uh, we may write uh, h 1 is nothing but uh, so, m dot times h 1 may be written as m dot a times h a 1 or we may write m dot times h 1 minus h 2 we can split that into two things and write it as m dot a times h a 2 minus h a 1 plus m dot b times h v 2 minus h v 1. So, we treat this as uh, two streams. And h a 2 minus h a 1 itself may be written as uh, C p a times t 2 minus t 1. Notice that m dot b may be replaced using the definition of omega. So, omega equal to uh, m dot v over m dot a. So, we may write m dot v equal to omega times m dot a. So, we write like this and h v 2 because it remains in the uh, in the vapor uh, state and does not condense h v 2 may be approximated as h g of t 2 h v 1 may be approximated as h g of t 1. Now, m dot a remember uh, it is given that uh, the um, uh, volume flow rate is 100 meter cube per minute at the inlet. Okay. So, volume mass flow rate of dry air may be evaluated using this information V1 dot divided by its own uh, specific volume, okay, which uh, we may evaluate using the ideal gas equation of state. So, this works out to 126.072. Notice that the uh, partial pressure of air is used here to calculate the mass flow rate of air. So, that is the correct way of uh, doing this, okay. P A 1 which is equal to P 1 minus P V 1. So, notice that again we are using Dalton's model. So, the volume flow rate that is given although it is not specifically given that it is volume flow rate of dry air uh, that is understood because we are using the Dalton's model. So, volumetric flow rate is given. Once I use the partial pressures correctly, I should be able to use the same value of, of uh, volume because the entire volume as I said is occupied by uh, all components of mixture only their pressures are, are different temperature and volume are the same. So, we can get Hg at the inlet state and Hg at the exit state from the uh, temperature table. And if you substitute the value, we get Q dot to be 40.458 kilowatts. The uh, next example that uh, we are going to look at involves uh, moist air, uh, but in this case, uh, we are actually going to uh, cool and dehumidify uh, uh, cool and uh, so we are going to cool the air, remove the uh, water vapor. Okay, so in the previous case, we actually uh, heated the air. In this case, we are going to uh, cool the air. So, here uh, we have written mass of liquid water to be equal to 1 minus x times m v 1. So, where we have used the definition of the dryness fraction. So, dryness fraction is defined as mass of vapor divided by mass of mixture and mass of vapor itself may be written as m minus mass of water divided by mass of uh, mixture. So, that mass of water is equal to 1 minus x times mass of the mixture. So, we started out with a certain amount of uh, water as you can see from here. So, we started out with a certain amount of water vapor at state 2 and now part of it has condensed as liquid and part of it remains as vapor. So, the mass of the mixture at state 3 is equal to the mass of water vapor that we started out with. So, we may then uh, write mass of the mixture as 1 minus, so this may be written as 1 minus x times times mass of vapor at state 2 or I am sorry mass of vapor at state 1 is also ok because uh, the vapor quantity of vapor remains the same. So, we may write this as mass of vapor at state 1 also. 